Joining me now to talk more about this, NBC's uh, Nicole Rosenthal, who reported on the story for NBC News Out. Nicole, thanks for joining us. Um, appreciate it. Um, how are these hormones being accessed and why? Absolutely. In my reporting, I found that this DIY um, hormone approach through accessing uh, hormones through unlicensed, unregulated internet pharmacies um, is by is managing your own dosing, right? Uh, the levels of the hormones that you're taking and the kind of hormones um, and medications that you're taking is completely unmanaged. Um, the onus is on the individual to monitor their own blood levels to make sure that they aren't taking too much or too little of a hormone uh, since there are multiple risks with under or overdosing. But these uh, hormones are found through online communities um, and through these resources, that's where you're able to access it. So if it's not being managed correctly through a licensed mm -hmm. physician um, and you're not checking in with someone regularly as well, what can happen? How dangerous can that be? Sure. There are um, plenty of dangers if you're not monitoring your own blood levels um, through underdosing or overdosing. There are um, the risks of blood clots. There are multiple cancers associated with prolonged use, um, as well as infected injection sites is what we found in our reporting. So we're getting this ruling out of Tennessee, right? And, and the question is um, how often, how many other states are going to be getting on board with banning um, uh, medical care, hormone therapy um, for uh, members of the trans community? And, and I want to talk about some numbers that we're seeing when it comes to polling. Um, a study found that gender-affirming care was associated with, get this, 60 percent decreased odds of moderate or severe depression and 73% decreased odds of suicide. Are you getting a sense that there are many people in this country, especially lawmakers, that don't necessarily know the repercussions of the decisions they are making in keeping gender-affirming care away from people that desperately need it? Absolutely. And you're going to find um, when folks can't find gender affirming care through medically supervised um, places, you're going to find it elsewhere. Right. That's sort of just human nature. Um, so for parents who have the means, for example, for their children, we might see these families moving uh, long distances to get that medical access for their child. For those who are over 18, we're seeing some folks uh, stockpiling hormones from these unlicensed, unregulated pharmacies um, in anticipation for bans for adults. Um, we also talked about how this is an economic issue. Are there plans somehow from the LGBTQ plus community to help subsidize um, this care, even for folks that might have insurance, but the copay is just simply out of reach? I think mutual aid is um, something that historically has benefited the LGBTQ plus community. Um, that's, you know, that's nothing new. But I think what we're seeing now is uh, this turn to unlicensed, unregulated uh, hormones through the informal market um, because they were just so much cheaper. Um, you know, according to GoodRx, we saw that um, it's around $100 per month on average for some folks um, to pay for their regimen through a medically supervised route. But online, it's about $8. So that's pretty striking for um, a community that is so historically um, economically dis under, uh, disadvantaged. Nicole Rosenthal, thank you so much. We've got a lot more coming up, folks. Um, our second hour starts right now.